we've all been to those kinds of meetings where somebody says, this speaker needs no introduction, and then goes on. Well, this speaker really doesn't need any introduction. I think everybody here knows Keith Enlow, uh, either because of his family relationships within the church or because Keith and Janet have been ministering in this church for many years. Or you might know Keith from his work among the community theaters in Jeff City. He's kind of famous, you know. Um, infamous. infamous. I first met Keith when he was a high school student. And I was a high school student. No, I was a teacher. We were both much younger then, though. But he was um, a brilliant and talented and fun kind of guy to have in class. And I think you'll enjoy his presentation this afternoon. Yeah, you might want to save that until you see what I'm going to do. Um, can we get the back bank of lights turned off? Just because I think it'll help with the slides. Thank you. Well, I, I thought about um, presenting to this group, and I, you know, Mrs. Nelson, she'll always be Mrs. Nelson to me, you know. Uh, she, I got to thinking, man, that was a long time ago. She must have been a child. She must have been straight out of school. Because I was going to poke fun at, you know, some of you, uh, the McGowans had me in youth group and Sunday school. Uh, you know, Mr. Baker was a teacher at the high school. Mrs. Nelson was a teacher. Oh, isn't it funny how old you've gotten and I'm still up young. Then I got slapped in the face with reality when Noel Blythe said the prayer and we were in high school together. So um, I'm, I'm old enough to be a member of this group. So uh, there, there you go. Um, I am th the favorite son of Frank and Mary D. Enlow. <laughs> Just so in case there's any, any question about that. Uh, the presentation you're about to see, first of all, if you can't see the screen, feel free to move your chair, adjust wherever you need to so that you can see the screen. Okay, how's that look to everyone? Okay, is the podium in the way for anybody? All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to stay close to this. I'll try to travel a little bit too. Um, so here's the, um, here's my disclaimer on this. I, I came up with this lesson several years ago when my own daughter was a sixth grader. Janet and I taught in the sixth grade Sunday school department. And one Sunday we were out of curriculum and so I had to come up with something. So um, back then I sang in the choir and I always would admire, instead of paying attention to the sermon, the, um, the window, the stained glass windows. So I wanted to learn more about them and did a little research. So that's where I, uh, where I came up with this, this uh, it was a Sunday school lesson at the time. Ken Satterfield, our own Ken Satterfield, gets credit for the photos. He did all the photography on this and you'll see, did a wonderful job with the photography. Um, a couple of disclaimers. Uh, History-wise, the original windows were created for the new sanctuary by an artist called Ronald Neal Dixon. He was a stained glass artist out of the Carolinas. I don't have much more information than that. He's since died. I think, in, in fact, I believe he passed away before the fire, and then, then we had to recreate the windows in 1987. And I'm assuming they recreated them as closely as they could, whoever the new artist was, but I have no information about who that artist was or who completed that work. Uh, Carolyn Todd has tried to help me with that a few years ago, and we really just don't know much. So, so historically, I don't have a lot of background. The other disclaimer that I have is I want to talk about the imagery and the artistry of the windows, and these are my impressions. Art has a different effect upon everyone who absorbs it and takes it in. So just because I see something or something that hits me a certain way, if you see something different, and I've done this and people do see different things, hey, that's okay, all right? 
So that's where we're going with this. Uh, I want you to close your eyes. Everybody close your eyes. And we'll start this journey. I want you to pretend you're sitting in the choir loft. Okay? And you're looking out over the, the congregation. Now, I want you to look up into the balcony to your left. And that's where we're going to start. Upper floor balcony to the left. So this is the Old Testament wall. This is the north, I'm sorry, the south wall of the narthex. Two stories, and here you'll see, these are the windows along the balcony, and these are the windows on the narthex main floor. And we'll go through each of those. But this is the Old Testament side, okay? I've got a few scriptures here. I, I'm, I typically would have people look up and read all these scriptures. For time's sake, we're not gonna do that. Most of you are biblically scholarly enough to know what this is going to be. So the first window in the upper floor is the creation. All right? Um, you, you will know. What, what do you see? Just shout out. What do you see in this? What do you see in this? I want to tell you. The hand of? Okay. The sun, the water, and the earth, the moon. So, heaven, heaven and earth, land and sea, moon and sun. There's a line going from the hand down to the water. Yeah, like, like a ray of something. A, a, you know, this was the hand of God creating the earth. Um, yeah, very good. So separation of, you know, the firmament. So that is the Old Testament where we start. Okay, anybody see anything else? One thing that I'll point out, and you'll see this as a theme carried throughout the windows, the windows are heavily influenced with blue as their background color, although the artist does change shades of blue. They also seem to have what appears to be like a stone arched frame around them. Some of them are more prominent than others, but you'll see this almost an oval type framing around each image, okay? The second window over is, what do you see here? The garden of the fall, okay? The fall of man, all right? Adam and Eve tempted in the garden. It was all Eve's fault. We know that. It's in the Bible. <laughs> but no, this, this is the fall. So God creates the earth for us, places us in the garden, and this is the original separation of man from God. All right? So you see the tree, tree of knowledge, wisdom, the serpent, and that's the fall. And all this does happen in Genesis, so you'll, you'll see these. Sharon and I had to get these Bibles and we're not going to use them. For time's sake, we're not going to use them. Sorry. The third window along the south wall in the upper level is the flood. So the first time God destroys the earth as retribution for man's sinful nature. Okay? So what do you see here? The dove, certainly. Rainbow. Rainbow, the ark. It's, this one's pretty easy to see, right? You know, the water, the waves. Okay. Pretty simple. So the flood. All right, now we're going to move from the balcony level directly down to the main narthex level, but the same wall. Okay, same south wall. This is a little harder. Burning bush, very good. You guys are sharp. Yeah. So what was the burning bush? Yeah, it was the calling of Moses as God's spokesperson on earth, right? So that's the symbology of Moses calling to be, at that time, the leader of the, the Hebrew nation. Okay? 
right before the Exodus. And this is, coincidentally, in Exodus. The next one over is Ten Commandments. Again, no surprises here. One thing I'll point out, and I should have done this earlier, anybody see where he doesn't use blue, you will almost always see something like this. He uses spots of red, but specifically, if you look at them close enough, they're can I, I believe they're candles. I believe they're candles. Because it's always a long with a little short piece of red. Sometimes it will change to an orange. But a lot of times, in almost every window, there's a, there's a red candle image in the window somewhere. Yeah, almost all of them have the oval frame. What do you call it, stone or just blue tiles? I'm, I'm not sure. It has a stone look to me. But um, yeah, almost every image has that. Okay, so the Ten Commandments. The New Covenant. All right? The New Covenant. And here is... Anybody watch Indiana Jones? Temple of Doom? This is the Ark of the Covenant. Okay? Here's your... This, this time the candle is green with a red flame, okay? There's an accent of red there. Everybody see the ark? The two angels guarding the ark, right? Okay. So that's the south wall of the narthex, Old Testament. Balcony level, main floor. Questions, comments? Okay, you're... Yes? I've always thought that was a helmet. A helmet. Well, okay, so, so this is how these images can be interpreted too, because if you're looking at like this dome shape, is that what you're seeing? I, I don't disagree. Could be a Viking helmet. Yeah. I don't think it is. My opinion, but I don't think it is. But you're, you're right. And I, depending on, we'll get to one later that's really funny. Uh, so, Old Testament. When we talk about our Christian heritage, this is where it starts. Okay? Now we're going to close your eyes again. You're still sitting in the same spot. And now we're going to look over to the right hand wall. So this would be the west wall. And we're going to move to the New Testament. Can you guys, am I standing in front of you? Can you guys see? New Testament. And again, these, these are the windows on the, actually, these are the windows on the lower level. And these are the windows on the balcony level. I don't know why they were positioned where they were. We'll go through them one by one. So lower level. Any guesses? Yeah, the birth. The birth of Christ. Nativity, star, pretty easy. There's your candle down there again. Your frame. Yeah, the birth. Birth of Christ. Okay. Crucifixion, the death. Okay. Um, anything you, that you find striking in this one or anything... Red background stands out, doesn't it? Yeah, he's done. I yeah. Again, I'm going to make some assumptions here. There's so much red in this that the can. What I think is a candle image, and I may be completely wrong about that. It isn't in every one, but yeah, it's certainly not prominent here, is it? No, I think the flame has gone out because of the Ah, there you go. See, now you're now you're talking on a whole different level. You're way over my head. Yeah. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if it's supposed to be stone or a rose or turmoil of the storm. I, I'm not sure. It's in a strange place if it's like when everything went dark. I, I, I'm not sure. I don't have, yeah. I, I think your, your interpretation of what you see is as valid as what I see, except maybe for the Viking helmet. <laughs> um, so yeah, so we had the birth, the death, and the resurrection. This one is a little difficult for some people to see. 
and I had your had all this court and I'm not going to use any of it um, but we certainly see so so the imagery here is a little abstract but what do you what do you see you see this and then this so the stone rolled away I, I believe that's what that's supposed to depict so the resurrection so on that main level west wall birth death resurrection the core tenets of Christianity right okay the other thing I want you to see about this one is and you'll see this a little later in a couple of other I think at least one other everybody sees the cross right this I believe is a banner okay a, um, a banner that's waving in the wind with the red cross on it okay a standard if it were I guess the standard is what you put the banner on but it's a flag it's a big flag a pennant maybe that's what I'm looking for with the two points okay certainly a sim a Christian symbol okay questions I, I I think bread throughout these symbolizes the blood of Christ. I think there's certainly an argument to be made for that. I think on this type of banner, that's the red cross is certainly blood of Christ. Yeah. Um, the one thing I find interesting about this, and it's one of the only times that I think we'll see it, is the use of green. <coughs> excuse me. Around the tomb. Interesting choice there. Life or life, you know, new life, right? Green is the green is symbolic of health and life, usually. So, okay, so that's the New Testament wall. All right. I'm sorry, we're not done with the New Testament wall. That's the lower level, west wall. Now we're going to go to the balcony level. Okay, this one's a little tougher for me, and I've heard several different interpretations. What do you guys think? I, I agree with that. Yes. Okay, the Holy Spirit. And or the Ascension. Okay? And or the Ascension. Now, interesting use of green here. He does that a little bit. Two candles. One blue, one red. Um, blood of Christ. Okay? But certainly the dove is symbolic of the Holy Spirit. Yes, ma'am. Certainly, certainly, valid, valid point. And again, in this one, the frame is pretty, pretty evident. He's gone back to his traditional blues on this window. Yeah, I, I, I've never heard that one before, Jeannie. I like that. Okay. Question? And then the third window along the balcony. I have my interpretation of this. Anybody else? What do you, what do you get out of this? If we've, if we've got the, the birth, death, and resurrection, we've got the ascension. I, I call it the Great Commission window. I agree wholeheartedly. This is evangelism. This is go ye therefore into all the world and preach the gospel to every nation. Okay? You've got the globe, certainly, the symbol of the cross in Christianity, and the rays of light. To me, that's what it is indicative of, so I, I agree with you guys. I think that's what we're talking about here. Hey, yes, chime what in. About the Greek cross and the, the yellow behind the other cross? That's what that looks like to me. Here? The cross, uh, uh, okay. Yeah, could be. Yes, could be the Greek letter. I mean, yeah, the Latin. No, it's Greek. Greek letter chi, yeah, which is an X. Yeah, it's as valid as anything I've got. Okay, so 
west wall, birth, death, resurrection, ascension or Pentecost or Holy Spirit, evangelism or the Great Commission, and the third one, this is the one that gets everybody. All right, so what do you see? You see a crown, right? Okay. Um, anything else you see that may symbolize royalty? Scepter, Scepter. Where you, right here, right? Scepter. Now, <laughs> this is what sixth graders see. This is the face of a dragon. Okay. The eyes, okay, so Alpha and Omega. Now this, these, I think these are the two hardest things to pick up. But you have A, because you've got the cross piece here for the A, and then Omega here. So this I call the revelation window. So this is the beginning and the end. And the scripture verses, if you look them up, correspond with those. Though that's, again, my impression. A um, couple of uses of red here, there's your candle, one little bit of green. Uh, so I call this, uh, so this is, yeah, this is the end. This is beginning the end, okay, to me. Does everybody, does everybody see the Alpha and Omega? They're the dragon eyes. This one's a little tougher. Okay, all right. So those are your, your narthex for your 12 windows, okay? Old Testament, New Testament. Now we're gonna go, where are we going next? We're gonna go right out here to this hallway. And as you leave, I actually encourage you to go and, and, and look at these. So this is right outside the Duke Chapel, along Monroe Street. And I call these our foundations of faith, okay? do it one at a time. Oh, there's not. No, I didn't separate these. So right over here. Scripture. Scripture. What's the lamp symbolize? Knowledge. Knowledge, learning, and you have the Bible behind it, and our, or a book behind it, our book is the Bible. So I believe that is symbolic of Scripture and learning, okay? The, um, the frame on these is not quite as evident, and it sort of changes to blues instead of that gray look. I don't know why. I don't know if that's important or not. Artistically, it's different. Second one. This one's tough. So you see the dove easily enough. You see the cross. I want you to concentrate right down here. What's that look like? The way these blue tiles or, or glass is inlaid, it's, they're not square, if you'll notice. Anybody get an impression of this? It's water. This is baptism. Okay? This is baptism. And The dove came down when Jesus was baptized, yes. Okay. But does everybody see the water now that I pointed out? These are way these are ripples or waves. It's not like your other blues that are all square. Difficult to see and for some reason again not very clearly outlined. Then the third one is sorry, let me get my Yes, communion. What do you see here? The cup, grapes, grapes wheat. wheat, which makes the unleavened bread. I think I think maybe this is one of my favorite win, uh, windows, just because I I like the we haven't seen purple before. I like the color in it. It's pretty clearly defined. Um, I like the composition of it. So yeah, but this is the communion window. The Lord's Supper. To me. Okay.
questions, comments? So I'm, I've had this, this, I think this is the stalk, and this is the head of the stalk. That's how I see it. it. It is a little, it's a little strange in its positioning, but I believe that's what it is. I believe this is the stalk, and then this is the head of the stalk, where the grain is. Make sense? It could be a long, narrow piece of bread. That's baked a little longer on this end than this end. And in that second one, do you see a triangle with the Father, Son, Holy Spirit? Um, I, um, there? There's several, there's, there's a few of them. There you go. Yeah? I learn something every time I do this. People see different stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So those windows right out here I call our um, foundations of faith. Next we're going to travel to, these are really hard to see because we don't traverse through this area very often. If you're on East Capitol, coming into the administration office's entrance. These three windows line the front of the building and can be seen from the staircase that goes up immediately when you come in that entrance and turn right. This is where these windows are visible. They are much easier to see from the inside with the light coming through them. It's very hard to identify what they are from the outside because everything is pretty dark. You can see them, but they're really more clearly seen from the inside. Okay? So. Yeah. I, so this is a, a well-known scripture, and this really is what depicts these three windows. You know, the cross represents what? Our... Faith. The anchor is an is always been a symbol of hope and love or charity. Yeah. All right. A little more green on some of these. Um, it may have just been the day that Ken took these pictures and how much light was coming through them as to how vibrant some of these are. But see, I put this here for Ken Satterfield on these pictures. I'm no, they're not. He did a great job. But faith, hope, and love. Okay? I do encourage you if you have not, how many people have been going to church here years and didn't even know these windows were here? These are easy to miss. They're really easy to miss. Okay? All right. The next, the next grouping of windows, now I want you to close your eyes again. You're not in the choir loft anymore. You're now sitting dead center in the middle of the sanctuary, lower floor, and you're going to look up above the choir loft, and this is what you'll see. You can open your eyes. So these are the tr Trinity windows. These are probably the most well-known because this is the view we get every week. But there are some interesting features about them that I want to point out. Okay, so you've got the Father. What do you see? The hand reaching down with a ray of sunshine or hope or whatever you want to call it. Um, these windows have a different style to them. The artist still incorporates a lot of the blue, but he has also incorporated, this is not that heavy chunk style of stained glass. These are more uniform in shape as far as their clearly defined lines. He uses a lot of these yellows, reds, and greens for the first time. We're seeing green through a lot of these windows that we don't see in the other windows. But everybody get the father here. 
the hand of God. Okay. I think I think of the middle finger pointing down that that could be the path that you should follow. Kind of it does look like a highway, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. yeah that's good. Good. This is on the, the left. This is the sun, and the sun is the Lamb of God. Now, I told you you would see that band, that Christian banner. Again, this is where you see it. And it's hard to distinguish because of the other red swooshes he uses. But this is, so what is the Lamb holding in the crook of its arm? You see this? So it's a, it's a standard. And to that standard is attached this banner with the red and white on it. That's my impression. Not everyone sees that. <laughs> okay? But Lamb of God, the Son. Okay? A little bit of purple in here that we haven't seen previously. Um, again, these windows are brighter. These windows are backlit so that at night you still get you still get the good imagery from them. It doesn't have to be daylight out. Okay? And finally, the Holy Spirit. Dove, symbolic of the Holy Spirit. Um, again, your uses of the red, yellow, and green swooshes. Uh, I, I really like the way that he almost, it, it almost has movement in it, the way he uses the swooshes, the swooshes and, the, and the colors. Um, not much more to say about that one. Everybody see it? I'm sorry, what's there? Uh, I would have said an olive branch, but I don't. Where do you see something in his mouth, Ken? This? I think it's just a sliver of yellow glass that got stuck in there. I don't know. It could be the breath of life. Let's call it the breath of life. Okay. You'll see that frequently in the way the glass is laid out. There's always geometric patterns and things. So, yes, like right here. Yeah. Yeah, certainly. Interesting the way, like, there's not a white there I don't know don't know what the purple through the dove means could be good call I can go with that yeah, yeah. okay <laughs> questions Oh my gosh, you didn't keep count? Do I, I was told there would be no math. I, I'm sorry. I, all right, so 3, 6, 12, 18, 21. This is, the, the, yeah, there is other implementation of stained glass in the building. This is, these are the ones that have the imagery that I thought conveyed the story of our faith. And um, so that's what I focused the, the presentation on. They actually did very well. And what we did with the sixth graders, and I'm sorry, I'm going to, I'm doing the thing you should never do in a presentation. The sixth graders, uh, we actually took them out of the room and we went, we, we did a walking tour. And they, they, you know, sixth graders, they love that. So, and I made them sit in the sanctuary and look up at the windows and we moved, we moved all around. And so it was, what I did with you having you close your eyes, we actually did that physically with the sixth graders. They, they liked it. I, uh, I did the lesson for, oh. It was Hannah's, my, that was my daughter who's 35 years old now, that was her group, so. My memory is no better than yours. Yeah, I mean, it was a group of 12, 18 kids maybe at that time, I don't know. Yeah. Small enough that we could move through the sanctuary at Sunday school without causing any commotion. 
Yes. You said things were at least created. How many of them were damaged in the fire? I think they were all lost in the fire. The sanctuary was completely destroyed. They all blew out. In fact, if you recall, if you were down here that night, there were stained glass chips out on East Capitol and on Monroe because the fire got so hot it blew the stained glass windows out of the building. Yeah. You did it for your, your Sunday school class, did you not also? I've done it for the Sunday school class that Jan and I are in, and I've done it for the class that Dad attends or attended. I don't know where we are now. But you don't promote anymore, do you? No. <laughs> Your next promotion, we don't want to talk about. <laughs> okay. What's that? We don't need any That's right. You won't need any imagery. That's right. So, um, so. <laughs> well, I appreciate your time and attention. Thank you very much for inviting me. And uh, again, Ken, thanks for your photography. Really makes it work. So. Who, who was here when the fire took place? Which fire? Okay, you guys have a good afternoon. Thanks. Let me. Thanks again, Keith. It was very informative, and there's a lot of hands that went up and said, you know, we. We pass these by every Sunday or when we're here other times. And um, I have to admit, I have looked at the three up above the, you know, but that's that kind of, kind of what do they say? You're a ceiling inspector when you kind of forget about what's being said at the service and you kind of gaze and look around. I have noticed those three, but there are other others. And as we go out today, I, you know, it'd be great if you could take a look at those. So. Uh, and thanks again, Ken, for this. I'm sure Aislinn will appreciate the, uh, the video. Okay, our next luncheon is June the 20th. We've already mentioned the genie uh, and the